coming to you live from the MVG Production Studios on YouTube. It's everyone's favorite game of strategy, knowledge, and fun. This is Tic Tac Toe. And now, here's your host, the star of Tic Tac Toe, the master of the X's and O's, Brandon Scruff. Gentlemen, and welcome into another edition of Tic Tac Toe right here at MVG Productions. Glad you could join us here once again. On our last episode, we crowned a brand new champion. He's back with us to see if he can win some more money this time around. And let's meet our contestants here, We're vying for all the cash uh, on the today's show. Starting with our returning champion, who's one game cash winning so far, total one thousand five hundred dollars. We've got Mr. Will Medina. Will, welcome in, sir. Oh my god, there's a bunch of lights in here. Turn them down! Anyway, I'm good to be back here. <laughs> yeah, we, we are in a production studio, sir, so we we have to have the lights on to see your face there. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you took down a very good champion last time in uh, Peach, and but unfortunately just ran up against that dragon in our last bonus round. Ready to see if you can turn your luck around here and try it again? Ain't no time like the present. Let's do it. All right, well, good luck to you. And I'm playing against you, your first opponent for this episode of Tic Tac Do. All the way from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, we have Mr. Mark Leota. Mark, welcome in. Pleasure to be back here, Brandon. Yeah, we saw Mark a couple episodes back. He, he just finished up a run as champion um, with over $84,000, I believe, when you won last time around. You ready to try your luck and see if you can get back at it and uh, get back at that champion's chair again? I am ready. All right, well, let's get right to it. Good luck to both contestants. Let's play some tic-tac-toe. You guys know how the game works, but for those of you who have never seen this show before, it's a, it's a basic game of tic-tac-toe, but with questions. We're going to put nine subjects on the board. They're going to pick a category, answer the question. If they get it correct, they get to put an X or an O in the box. First person to score a tic-tac-toe, either across, up, or down, or diagonally on the board, wins the game, all the cash in the pot, and we'll move on to the bonus round. Now, cash is awarded, as always. All the outside boxes are going to be worth $200 each. The center box is a, is a two-part question. It's going to be worth $300. And, of course, there's some special categories that can add more money to the pot, uh, but we'll talk about those as we get to them. But for now, let's take a look mm -hmm. at... Let's take a look at the nine subjects we will be using in this first game of Tic-Tac-Toe, and they are the following. <laughs> Alright, we have the challenge category, anything goes, seesaw, music, general knowledge, pop culture, secret category, foolish phrases, and we're booked. And Okay, of course, the red categories, we'll talk about those as we get to them. And we'll go ahead and get started here with our... Champion Will with the first selection of the board. Go ahead, Will. All right, all right. Uh, let's go dead in the middle, and let's go general knowledge. All right, general knowledge in the center box. Again, a two-part question here to general knowledge. You'll have some extra time to think about it here. All right, if you're under general knowledge, Will, your, your two-part questions are this. First off, in what part of the body can you find the hamstrings? What part of the body can you find the hamstrings? That's the first one. And the second one is, what sort of race is the highlight of the film Ben-Hur? Is it A, the steeplechase, B, the chariot race, or C, the marathon? Those are your two questions. Take some time to think about them. <laughs> All right, well, which one would you like to answer first? <clears throat> Sorry, I was drinking some water. I will take the first one. Sure, and what part of the body can you find the hamstrings? The hamstring is between the hip and the knee, basically, but I'll just say, I'll say around the knee area. All right, uh, Judge says we can accept that. We find them in the legs. It's, we're looking for a specific, uh, just a part of the body. So legs, uh -huh. we'll take it. So that's good. And for the center box, what sort of race is the highlight of the film Ben Hur? Is it the steeplechase, the chariot race, or the marathon? <coughs> I'm sorry. That would. Ugh, I think I watched this for. I would say the chariot race. Let's take a guess. I'll Chari Chariot Race. Chariot is the correct answer. Very good. Center box is yours. All right. All right. Well done. Let's put an X on the board. 
We got $300 in the pot for that cinnamon box question, and now we shuffle. Mark, over to you for your first selection. Hmm, let's see here. I like foolish phrases, please, Brandon. Going with foolish phrases in the bottom bottom of the board here. Uh, of course, our foolish phrase category. I'm going to give you a foolish phrase, which is gonna, not going to make any sense to you until, unless you read it out. And then uh, what you're going to do is you're going to try to tell me what that foolish phrase actually says in order to get the box, all right? All right, so take a look at the chat, and folks at home, you'll see the foolish phrase on the screen. Mark, for this one, all you have to do is tell me, what does the foolish phrase, Don, P, Hunger, Lim, N, actually mean? Uh, let me see here. Um... Uh... Well, it's obviously a phrase I've never heard of, but I... So I have to unscramble this, correct? Um, yeah, it basically, it's a, it's a phrase that is actually saying... It says, it reads out as one thing, but it actually says something else. All you have to do is tell me what that foolish phrase actually is. It's probably going to be wrong, but I'll just take a guess and say it suddenly dawned on me. No, no, sorry, that's incorrect. Uh, dawned P. Hunger, Hugger, Lim, Ann. If you say it really quickly, it actually says, don't be a girly man. Don't oh, be a girly don't man. Be a girl. Yes. Okay. Yes, that, that's how that phrase. Oh, you know what? This actually now reminds me of those Remus puzzles from Concentration. Something like that, yes. That, that, it's, it's more like Mad Gabs if you've ever done those, so that's what that one is for. But alright, unfortunately no box there, so we still have $300 in the pot. We shuffle. <laughs> and, Will, we're back to you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and... You know what? Let's do some anything goes. Why not? All right. Any, it up. Anything goes in the upper left, uh, upper right hand corner. Excuse me. Here, here comes your question. I say right. <laughs> yeah. Under your question, under anything goes, sir. All right. Well, here's your question. What is the best selling band of all time? What is the best selling band of all time? Is it A. The Monkees, B. The Beatles, or C. The Rolling Stones? Oh my god, that could be anybody. Okay, can you repeat the choices? A, the Monkees, B, the Beatles, or C, the Rolling Stones. Okay. I heard these guys have sold a lot more, so I'm going to take a guess. If I'm wrong, oh well, I'll say the Beatles, Brandon. And that is a correct answer. Very good, sir. <laughs> well done. Okay. Put an X on the board. We've got $500 in the pot there. Let's shuffle the categories. Mark, over to you. Uh, I'll say you don't have much of a choice. Use it to block, please, Wink. I mean, Brandon. <laughs> hey, I, will, I ain't gonna lie. I will take that as a compliment any day of the week. And the fact that I'm just getting enough love by that, I appreciate that very much. More than you'll probably ever know, sir. All right, uh, here comes your question under music for the block, sir. All right, under music, the question is, what did the band The Clash rock? What did the band The Clash rock in a famous song of theirs? For the block, name it. Oh. Uh, showing my lack of musical knowledge here. Uh, my lack of musical knowledge is going to bite me in the butt. I know I'm this. sorry, I have no answer. No guess? All right. I know this one. All right, Will. It's a fit. They rock the cast by. Rock the Yes, that is, that, is what, that is the famous thing that they rocked in their song there. So, 
Fortunately, no box for Mark there, so we remain with $500 in the pot. We shall shuffle the categories again. And Will, it could be a break for you here. I should know, I better know that one. My brother likes that song way too damn much. And uh, just because it looks orange and Halloween's coming up, secret category for the win. All right, get this question correct under secret category. It will be tic-tac-toe. And we will double the pot to a thousand dollars. Of course, secret category question could be about anything. Here comes your question, Will. Yes. In bowling lingo, which of these refers to a bowling ball? Again, in bowling lingo, which of these refers to a bowling ball? Is it A. Orange, B. Apple, C. Coconut, or D. Melon? <laughs> Wow. I couldn't bowl to save my life. <laughs> uh, wow. I can't say that I know. <sighs> Sorry, Brendan. I actually don't know this one. So I, I have no I guess. It's multiple <laughs> choice, so take a guess. Okay. I'll say an orange, but I'm not mm -hmm. going to be right on that one. No, I'm sorry. It's uh, not an orange. Mark? I think I might know it. Mm -hmm. I I've bowled before, Will. I believe a bowling ball would resemble a coconut. No, actually not in this case. Um, in bo terms of bowling lingo, according to my information here, uh, the bowling ball is referred to as an apple. It's referred to as an apple. Oh, what? Huh? Mm-hmm. It's not that it resembles an apple, but I guess they I guess it's the old uh, saying of like going back to William Tell days when he's shooting the apple off his son's oh, head or something like that. Way, yeah. I guess that's what this referring to as there, but unfortunately no box for Will, so the pot remains at five hundred dollars. Mark's still alive in this one as we shuffle categories. Hopefully that made more sense. But I agree. I agree. Mark, go ahead. <laughs> oh, why, board? Why? Music to block. All right, once again, another music question. Didn't have much luck with the last one. We'll see if, how you do here with this question. All right. Mark, for the block on this one, what letter of the alphabet do the sound holes on violins resemble? Again, what letter of the alphabet do the sound holes on violins resemble? Is it A, the letter T, B, the letter S, or C, the letter D. Mm. Repeat those one more time. T, as in Tom, S, as in Sally, or D, as in dog. Okay, but it's an easier music question this time. I'm going to say the letter T. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. <laughs> They actually resemble the letter S. Mm. The letter oh. S is what the, the, the holes on a violin represent. They allow to reverberate sound from inside the violin out to it. So, fortunately, no block there. Will still got a chance to win at $500 in the pot. We shuffle. All right, Will. One of the weakest categories of my life, but I have to win this game. So, uh, pop culture... All right, get this question correct under pop culture, sir. It's Tic Tac Doe, seven hundred dollars, and you're going to go to the bonus round. Here comes your question: Who sang the classic '80s song "Girls Just Want to Have Fun"? For Tic Tac Doe and seven hundred dollars, name the singer. <sighs> and my mo and my mom would slap me from heaven. That would be the famous Cindy Lauper. Yeah. That is correct for Tic Tac Doe! And I actually do that. Congratulations, sir. Well done. That is $700 more for you. And you're going to be playing against the dragon in just a moment here. Uh, Mark, unfortunately, this is where we got to say goodbye to you, sir. But did you have a good time playing with us today? I did. And I actually knew the answer to that last one myself. And here's why. Mm -hmm. When I worked at the uh, Blacklight Theater a few years ago, there was a show that we did, and that song happened to be in that particular production. 
Yep, and it's, it's a popular song. Plus, Cindy Lauper, uh, famous for making a WWE appearance at one point in time as well. Hmm. So, I think that's where right. Will might have. Well, well, good luck in the bonus round. I'll try. Good game between both of you. Will, that's another $700 in the pot for you, sir. So that brings your total now up to $2,300. Are you ready to go see if you can take down that dragon and possibly earn some more money? Uh, let's do it. All right, come on over here. Let's beat that dragon. All right, Will, welcome in, sir. It's uh, bonus round time for you. Of course, we've got the nine numbers on the board. We've got Cash and Mouse behind them. One's got a tick, one's got a tack, and, of course, one holds the beast within. I call him Fluffy. Your objective, of course, is to get to $1,000 or find the tick and the tech and no before you find the dragon in order to win. Now, get to $1,000 will multiply your winnings by the number of uncovered boxes still remaining on the board. However, if you find the tick and tech on any of your two picks, you win the tick tech jackpot, which currently stands at $12,000. Find the tick and tech on your first two picks, however, I'll double the cash amount to $2,400, and you'll get a chance to play in the super bonus game to earn even more money, okay? All right, any questions before we get going? Uh, no. All right. Let's do it. Let's right. go through. All right, best of luck to you. We're going to shuffle the board up, move them all around. All right, there's your nine numbers. And, of course, at any time, if you have a fear of the dragon, you could stop and take the money you've won and walk away. All right? So are you ready, Will? Go ahead and start picking. Good luck to you. Just on a mental note, I am not going to quit. So we're going to go all the way. So just say all right, let's start off with number four. Number four, left side of the board, what do we have behind Numero Cuatro? Oh, oh you serious? <laughs> First pick out the gate, and Fluffy's like, uh, 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 uh. You stupid dragon. You no, know, if this was the Dragon Finder game, you would have won easily. Yeah, but yes. unfortunately, it's not. <laughs> All right, we got to open up the rest of the board and see where everything else was. Where was the tick and tack hiding? Three and five was your magical combination today, sir. What you needed there. All right, so unfortunately no bonus money for you this time around. 0 and 2 against the dragon, but you are still the champion now. You've got $2,300 in cash, and we are going to pause and take a quick commercial timeout, and we'll be back to find another contestant. We'll play some more tick tac toe. We'll do that right after this. Stay with us. Welcome back to Tic Tac Doe. Will, unfortunately, ran face first in the dragon again. But he's still our champion. He's still got $2,300. And hopefully this time we'll be able to give away some money to him. But this can, opponent might take it from him as well. Coming to us from Palm Bay, Florida, we have Mr. Chris Rahman. Chris, welcome back, sir. Thanks. Hi, everyone. It's great to be back. Yeah, a good friend from the uh, Sunshine State back with us again on Tic Tac Doe. Not, you've had some luck on the show, but not really to the extent of what you would like to see. You think the day's the day you could turn things around for you, Chris? So we'll have to see what happens here. All right, well, best of luck to you. Let's jump right into it and take a look at the nine subjects we'll be using in this game of Tic Tac Doe. They are the following. Let's see how much will each one we have. We have take a letter, food and drink, secret category, $1,000 question, past, present, and future, general knowledge, double or nothing, athletic feats, and geek chic. We'll talk about the red categories if you decide to choose them. Uh, I will mention the double or nothing category. If you choose that one, you have a chance to earn two boxes in the same the turn. All right. So with that said, uh, Will, you are the champion. You, of course, you get to start. Give me a selection. All right. Let's just keep it easy peasy with past, present, and future. All right, going past, present, future in the center box. Again, another two-part question. You'll have some extra time to think about it as, on this one. All right, Will, there are four U.S. states that were once independent republics in the U.S. There were four U.S. states that were once independent republics. For the center box, I only need you to name two of them for me. Four states in the U.S. that were former independent republics. All you have to do is name two of them. Here's your extra time to think about it. 
All right, Will, uh, name, those t name two of the four states that were once independent republics. That were, that were former independent republics, you said? Yeah, that were once independent republics, yes. Okay. Wow. I think one of them... Was Texas? Texas is one. Need one more for the center box. And the other one I would like to say was five seconds. I'll just say Louisiana. Good guess. Fortunately, an incorrect answer there. Uh, Texas was one of the states. The other three were Hawaii, Vermont, and your home state of California. Ooh. Ah, shit. All right. All right, so no box there. No money in the pot yet. We'll shuffle the categories. <laughs> and Chris, your first selection. Uh, take a letter, please. All right, take a letter top of the board. I will give you the first letter to the correct answer for this question. All you have to do is give me the right answer and you get the box, all right? Right. Under undertake a letter, sir. Your letter is N. 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 Letter N. Okay. What N has the name Millhouse and was ruined by Watergate? Again, what N has the name Millhouse and was ruined by Watergate? For the box, name him. Yeah, I don't think I can come up with an answer for that. I'm afraid. I think I should know this one. All right, I guess there. All right, Will, go ahead. I think this N would be Nixon. Yes, Richard Nixon, former president. Yes, he was the oh, man who wore my water game. So Nixon's what we were looking for there. All right. So no box there. We we'll shuffle the categories again. <laughs> and Will, go ahead and make a selection. Yeah. Oh God. I think my lady would know this type of stuff, but. <laughs> Geek Chic, send a box. Let's go. All right, go on with Geek Chic. Again, another two-part question here under Geek Chic. You'll have some extra time to think about it here. All right, well, under uh, Geek Chic, here's your two. Here's your two-part question. First off, I need you, what kind of animal, or what's the more common name of the animal known as Ursus maritimus? Ursus Maritimus, what's the more common name for that animal? That's the first one. And the second one is, which fish species revolutionized the fishing industry? What fish species revolutionized the fishing industry? Those are your two questions. Take some time to think about them. <laughs> All right, Will, which one would you like to answer first? I'll uh, take the first. All right. What What is the more common name of the animal known as Ursus maritimus? That would be the polar bear. That is the polar bear. Correct. And now for the center box and $300, what fish species revolutionized the fishing industry? Wow. There's a lot of them. Uh... Wow, there's a lot. Uh, I would say, uh, I'll, uh, I'll say the salmon. I'm not even sure. I'll say salmon. No, sorry, incorrect there. It wasn't the salmon, but it's a popular fish that's used in a lot of sandwiches, especially you see it like restaurants. Yeah. It's the cod. Oh, you suck. It's the cod. Cod is what it was there. All right. All right, so no money in the pot yet. We shuffle once again. <laughs> Chris, over right. to you. Let's get back to take a letter, please. All right, you're going to try his luck again with take a letter. Here comes your take a letter question, sir. All right. Your letter this time, Chris, is K. Letter K. Okay. What K is the surname of the Baptist minister who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964 for nonviolent resistance to racial inequality? 
Again, what K was the surname or last name of the Baptist minister who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964 for nonviolent resistance to racial inequality? For the box, name him. Uh, I need to hear that question again. One more time. What K is the surname of the Baptist minister who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964 for nonviolent resistance to racial inequality? For the box, name him. Oh, Lord, who would that be? Lee. I know this one, of course. I studied him. I... I can only think of one K, but I don't, I don't... I'm afraid the name's not coming to me, I'm afraid, so I'm gonna say... I'm, I don't know this one. No guess? All right. No. Will, I know educate it. him, please. I had a dream! That, if you know who said that one, Chris, Damn it. that's your. Yep. Damn it! It is Martin Luther <laughs> King. Was... King is what we were looking for there, so. Still no boxes yet on the board this time. We shuffle. That was kind of a difficult thing for me. Well, over to you. Hey, believe me, man. I don't know many people. I don't know many Nobel Peace Prize other than him and, uh,. Uh, 65. Uh, Geek Chic once again. Alright, didn't work so well for you the first time around. Let's see if you do better this time on this Geek Chic question. Alright, Will, and this one, on the under Geek Chic and this time, here is your two, here's your two part question here. First off, uh, you answered the question earlier about uh, polar bears. But my first question to you is, how many modern bear species are there in the world? How many modern bear species are there in the world? Is it A, 4, B, 6, or C, 8? That's the first one. The second one is, what's the name of the deadly fish used in Japanese cuisine? What's the name of the deadly fish used in Japanese cuisine? Those are your two questions. Take some time to think about them. Alright, Will, which one would you like to answer first? I'll take the first. Alright, first one. How many modern bear species are there? Is it A, 4, B, 6, or C, 8? Modern bear species. Modern. I'll say 8. 8 is the correct answer. Now for the center box and $300, what's the name of the deadly fish used in Japanese cuisine? Oh, Jesus Christ. I think I have it. Uh, I can only think of one, but uh, I would I'll probably rob. I'm going to say the puffer fish. Better known as Fugu, you are right. Wow. Oh, wow. Good job, sir. $300 in the pot. You have the first X on the board this game. Let's shuffle. Chris, over to you. Let's go food and drink. All right, going food and drink in the lower right-hand corner. Here comes a question for you under the category of food and drink. All right, Chris. What is the world's most widely used seasoning? What is the world's most widely used seasoning? Is it A, salt, or B, pepper? Last I checked, salt was a last I checked, salt was used on a lot of food nowadays, so I'm gonna say salt. And that is a correct answer. Well done. You got a no on the board. Cause that's what that salt is common nowadays on food. It's cooling Snacks. Oh, very good. So you got your uh, first on the board. We have five hundred dollars in the pot. We got this game going now. A shuffle. All right. Well, over to you. Uh, yeah, hiya, hiya, hiya. Uh, I'll take athletic feats. All right, athletic feats in the upper right-hand corner. Here comes a question under athletic feats for you. All right, Will, under athletic feats, what what NFL team was the very first one to win a Super Bowl game? What was the first NFL team to win a Super Bowl game? For the box, name the team. 
the first NFL team to win a Super Bowl. I should know this one. If I don't, I would be pissed off. I will say, and I hope this is, I'll say the, the Green Bay Packers. And that is a correct answer. Well done. Another X on the board puts you at $700, and I don't have to take away your football fan card now. So good job there. <laughs> 700 bucks, let's shuffle. <laughs> Chris, over to you. Oh, jeez. Okay, Gen all right, you'll win. General knowledge for the, for the block. All right, get this question correct. Under general knowledge, you will have a block of wheel. Here's your question. All right. All right, Chris, what is the lowest adult male singing voice called? What is the lowest adult male singing voice called? Is it A, the bass, B, the baritone, or C, the tenor? Say that question again. Yes, the lowest adult male singing voice. Is it bass, baritone, or tenor? I don't think baritone's not going to be it. Uh, I'm probably... Uh, what are the answer choice again? I just wanted to make sure. Bass, baritone, or tenor? Five seconds. I'm, I'm going to take a guess and say bass. That is correct for the block. Well done. There we go. $900 in the pot. Now let's shuffle the categories. <laughs> well, over to you. Okay. Uh, only because... Secret category. All right, secret category for the block. Get this secret category question correct here. Not only will you have a block of Chris, but we will double the pot to $1,800. Again, here comes your question under secret category, sir. How many stripes appear on the United States flag? How many stripes mm -hmm. appear on the United States flag, the current one? For the block, name it. Better get this one. Oh, wow. Really? Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, though. I, uh... There's, I'll say 15, because it looks very damn close. I'll say 15. No, I'm sorry. It's not 15. It's actually 13. 13 stripes on the American flag, one representing each of the original 13 colonies of our country there. So, can't give you the box there, so we remain at $900 in the pot. Chris, with a chance to win it as we shuffle. All right, give me the category here. Oh, really? The same one? All right. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can win. A secret category for the win. All right, get this question correct. Again, same scenario for you, but this time, if you get... If you get it, you will have tic tac dough, and we will double the pot once again to $1,800. Chris, what yes. animal is featured on the Ferrari emblem? What animal is featured on the Ferrari emblem? Is it A, the bull, B, the horse, C, the lion, or D, the snake? For tic tac dough and $1,800, name the animal. Can you repeat that, please? One more time. What animal is featured on the Ferrari emblem? The bull, the horse, the lion, or the snake? I'm going to take a wild shot in the dark on this one because I think there's a logo under that. Is it a lion? No, I'm sorry. It's not a lion. It was a horse. Horse. Oh, okay. Horse representing horsepower behind the engine. The Ferrari being supposedly one of the highest and strongest engines you could put into a car, but nonetheless, that was the thing. Plus, it was Italian made, if I'm not mistaken. There, so uh -oh. no box there. We still have nine hundred dollars in the pot. We shuffle the categories again. Ow. Will is saved, and Will. How well do I know my letters? I know my letters. Fuck it. Take a letter for the block. All right, going with take a letter for the uh, block there. Could have may have went a different route, possibly going with the double or nothing question here to try to win the game. But again, your call. We'll go for the block here. Undertake a letter. Here comes your question, sir. Your letter is uh, D. Letter D for this one. Hey. What D 
is the adjective applied to wines that aren't sweet? What D is the adjective applied to wines that are not sweet? For the block, name it. Oh, I... Duh, you know I'm not a drinker. Jesus Christ. I know a few people that are, uh... <laughs> yeah, I they, be they better be dry. I'll say dry. I don't know this shit, but I don't drink. I'll say dry. Good guess, because you're correct. That's a block. Nicely done, sir. $1,100 in the pot now. We shuffle the categories again. Okay. Chris, over to you. Ah, ooh. All right. Athletic feet for the block. All right. Going to athletic feet's top of the board. This will get you a vertical block of wheel here. Question under athletic feats. Chris, how many points is the bullseye worth in archery? Again, how many points is the bullseye worth in archery? For the block, name it. I think it's... I'm as, I Is it 10? 10 is correct. Very good. You got the block. I think I know that one because I played a Wii game with that, actually. Oh, well done. It paid off for you, sir. Well done. $1,300 in the pot. We have three boxes remaining on the board. We'll see what happens as we shuffle. Will, over to you. Uh, fuck my life. I have to do this. Third. Which one would you like? Yeah, I'll take it. $1,000 question. All right, going with the $1,000 question, all right? All right, side of the board. Give me the correct answer on this one, and we will add $1,000 to the pot. Sir, here comes your $1,000 question. Oh. All right, Will, which of these is a sailing vessel commonly used in China? Again, which of these is a sailing vessel commonly used in China? Is it A, trash, B, junk, C, rot, or D, jumble? Uh -huh. uh, just repeat the choices. Tr I got the question. Trash, junk, trash. rot, or jumble? Sounds like something Oscar the Grouch needs for his Christmas, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh... I'll say junk? I don't know. It doesn't sound like a ship name, but I'll just say junk. <laughs> just be funny. Hey, you can laugh your way to the bank, because that's right. What? Wow. Nicely done, sir. Add a thousand dollars to the pot... Up to $2,300 now, and we shuffle the categories. Those categories be good at this point. Chris, it's on you. Geek Chic for the block. All right, going with Geek Chic for the block here. Here comes your question under Geek Chic. All right. All right, Chris, simple 50-50 on this one. Do okay. Pe do peanuts grow above or below ground? Do peanuts grow above or below ground for the block? Name it. I. Do they grow above ground? No, I'm sorry. It's below. Uh, below. They, they are an underground plant just like carrots and potatoes. So, no block there. Will has a chance to win it as we shuffle the categories. 2300 in the pot. Will, go ahead. Take a letter for the win. All right, get this question correct. Under take a letter, it is tic-tac-toe, $2,500, and you'll remain as champion here. Here comes your... Here comes your question. Your letter this time is J, Will. Letter J. What J right. 
What J is a general feeling of disorientation and fatigue as a result of a long flight? Again, what J is a general feeling of disorientation and fatigue as a result of a long flight? For Tic Tac Doe and $2,500, name it. A J. Uh. Oh, God. I. Five seconds. I will say, I'll say jet lag. Jet lag is the correct answer. You got it for Tic Tac Doe. Well done, sir. Congratulations to you. That is $2,500 in cash. A big win for you there. And you get another chance to go play against the dragon here in just a minute. Chris, did you enjoy yourself, sir? I did. Hey, you played a good game. You can't. You had him on the ropes a couple times there. Unfortunately, just the questions didn't fall your way, yeah. sir. But uh, we thank you for playing. And we give you. Uh, we'll have a... Um, some nice parting gifts for you. We'll have you back on a future episode, all right? All right. With that yeah. with that said, no problem. Chris is going to be leaving us yeah. here. Will is our champion now. He now has a grand total of $4,800. And we're going to go see if he can win some more playing our Beat the Dragon game. Come on over, Will. I fired my, I fired my waiter, so, uh, I have to take number two, game two, the water. Shit. <laughs> That's alright, no problem, sir. Alright, I'll just remind, remind you here that if you can find the tick of the tech this time, sir, the jackpot is currently now up to $13,000. Which means you'll get 26000 if you find yeah, Ticket Tech on your first two picks. Uh, when you are ready, go ahead and start picking and pick the see if we go. Good luck to you. Which one do you want? For this one, Brandon, the lady's going to pick the numbers. Okay, that is fine. Okay, go ahead. Which one, hun? J just pick which one. Eight. You heard her. Dragon's Den. Dragon's Cave number eight. What do we have? Now see here. Bang. Bang. <laughs> it never surprises me how often this happens on this show. And just huh? first pick out. Okay. Fluffy's like. I think the dragon is the first game. Wow. Well. Someone find the dragon on the first pick again. Yeah. It was a thing that happened. All right, let's reveal the rest of the board and show where everything was. There it all is, the tick, the tech, and all the cash up there. Well, Will, bad news, sir. Unfortunately, no um, no bonus cash for you again this time. But good news is, though, you are still the champion. You've got yourself $4,800 now in winnings, and you'll be back on our next episode to defend your championship once again. But as for now, folks, we're going to pause for the cause and take one last commercial break. When we come back, we're going to play a little Dragon Finder, see if we can give away somebody else some money here for actually finding the dragon on the first pick. We'll do that right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Tic Tac, there, ladies and gentlemen. We're just about out of time for this episode, but before we go... We're going to give our audience members one last chance to see if they can find the dragon and earn themselves some cash for their MVG bank accounts here. I'm putting up $5,000 to the lucky person who can find my dragon. Let's see, Will, I shouldn't even let you play because you've done it twice now, but hey, Champion always gets the first pick here in the Dragon Finder, so if you can do what you've done twice in a row already, find my dragon, it will actually give you money this time. So if you're ready, sir... Pick a number. Where is that dragon hiding? Will, can you hear me? Well, he must he must have stepped away. So that's fine. We'll just go right down. We'll go right down the list, starting from the bottom this time. Work our way up, starting with Mark. Nine numbers up there for you, Mark. Where is the dragon hiding? Number eight. He tends to be lazy. Yeah, he is notoriously lazy. Let's see, is Fluffy still in his cave? Nope, not this time. 
We actually found ah. money. All right, uh, we move up to Justin now. Four. Number four. Let's see behind four. Is he there? Nope. We have a tech there. All right, Chris. Oh. Oh, sorry about that air, it's just not dipping. Um, I'll, I'll do five. Setter box, is he behind five? Yeah. Nope, not there. Uh, Mr. Lima, over to you. Okay, we're playing Find the Dragon? Yep. Let's see it. Let's see. Number nine would be hiding. He'd be hiding there. All right, Fluffy, you back behind nine. Nope, not there. And last chance to see if we can find him, um, Frankie. Number seven. Seven, we're learning, trying to find a dragon. Do is he there behind seven? Now see here! I'm mad oh. everybody's gotten it backwards today. See, in the main show, you're supposed to get to a thousand or find Tick and Tack. In Dragon Finder, you're supposed to find the dragon. I think everybody's got it backwards now. <laughs> well, unfortunately, no dragon to be found this time. Let's see where he was hiding, though. I'd be hiding behind six, right? Nope. Top of the board, number one. Two. Number one is where he was. It's really... Yeah, that's where he was oh, this wow. time. All right. Yeah, up there. Well, unfortunately, that's all we can do for this one here. We thank uh, everyone for playing along. We did, couldn't give away the money this time, but we're going to see if we could uh, give it away on our next episode. But in the meantime, between time, I want to thank everybody for watching another fun-filled game of uh, Tic-Tac-Doe. Remember, if you like this series and you want to see more of it, all you got to do is click that subscribe button down below and ring the bell. That way you never miss out on all the fun and games going down here at MVG Production. And until the dragon comes and plagues us once again, we have more chances to play Tic-Tac-Doe. I'm your host, Brandon Scruggs, saying thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time right here on another episode of Tic-Tac-Doe. Take care. Bye for now, folks. Our party suggests that someone see the camera for Raviolios in the video. They can't see the pieces of the spoon. Uh oh, it's the videos and Raviolios. From Vaseline, there's a new lip there's a chapstick. Most of that chapstick is pretty easy to move. Never goes to chapstick again from Vaseline. The Mr. Coffee Ultrasonic System. Space Age Technology is the best cup of coffee on this planet or any other planet by Mr. Coffee. Alright, Chapstick, now it's more great taste than Mr. Sleep. More flavors that want to say, I want to pop. Alright, Chapstick. Salad ball supplies 17 salad dressing. Most of salad dressing is the only family in love. Who makes the salad dressing? You with 17. A dry cream that gets you more than you want. A blue substitute that gets white clean and white. It's outstanding and even clears up your toe. You need automatic shut off iron. Takes the worry out of iron. The piece lets you know it's lifted on and it shuts off automatically. GE, a magic network. And one lucky member of our studio is to receive the Enterprise Battery Operator Wall Clock and a walnut finish cap. A timely gift from West Clock, a tally in the trees now. Production. In association with MBG Productions.